This video is going to be super valuable for anyone who is new to editing in DaVinci Resolve or just anyone that hasn't really looked deeply into some of the specific but valuable uh, text tools in DaVinci Resolve. And working with text can trip up a lot of new users. Um, notably, because if you have a timeline in Resolve, you open your FX library, come down to titles, you have a text tool and then text plus. What's going on here? I can demonstrate by just dragging this plain text effect to my timeline. And you know, it is a straight text effect. You have your controls here in the inspector. Uh, notably, you can also interface with this just by clicking in this viewer. You can type in here, select whatever you want, type in all sorts of fun stuff like subscribe. And you also have controls for like scaling it up or moving it around or rotating all the fun stuff as well as, of course, your controls in the inspector for all those same options. Uh, a small feature um, that lots of people miss is that especially um, with this overlay here, you can click in, select specific letters and change those uh, style or color, all sorts of stuff independently. There is some funky issue with like the overlay of this, like doesn't quite match this layout. Um, but you know, this very simple sort of character level styling is here as well. You also have control for a custom stroke around your text that will be easier or harder to see. Oh, I turned on that stroke even just for those I selected. Let's, let's restart. We have this title, subscribe. We have options like a stroke we can turn on. We have a drop shadow that is hard to see on this black background as well as just this uh, background option if you want something that stays a little dynamic. Oh no, not dynamic to your text. If you don't just a uh, solid behind it, you can do that here. Now, um, what is one reason I'm not super familiar with these tools? Cause I never use the, the default text tool in Resolve. I use text plus. And as much as I would say that, you know, uh, both text tools are valuable and you know, you can pick one over the other if you want access to some things, the text plus tool, is pretty great and it's what I use all the time. If you want some of the specific functionality we just saw in the text tool, uh, sometimes it's a few extra clicks or it's like not as surface level, but you can still do a lot of stuff. Um, for instance, I just drag this text plus to my timeline. I can't by default interact with it here on this viewer. Uh, but if I go down to this drop down option, toggle on a fusion overlay, now I have some options to move this around. I can even, I believe I can click in here. Yeah, and start typing in here as well. Let's clean that up with a little subscribe as well. And of course you have these controls uh, in the inspector too, but you have these multiple different pages of tools. And here's where a lot of the power starts to, you know, funnel in. Before I show off some of those specifics, I did want to say that the you know impetus for this video um, was the fact that DaVinci Resolve added in uh, Resolve 19 a new default fusion title, this comic title. Hey, it's a cool sort of comic title. And a cool thing I wanted to say about the standard text plus title um, is that everything you'll see here is the default text tool over in the fusion page as well. In fact, um, on this title or any other fusion title or any fusion effect, you have this little button to open this effect in the fusion page. And if I click that, you will see that it is just this one template node. It did rename this for this text tool, but you see if I view it, it's just our text here. If I create a new text plus tool, preview that, start typing in there, you see we have, uh, the exact same like layout of all these different options. And these options can get crazy leading to some stuff like this fun comic title. But if we open up this comic title in Fusion, you'll see again, only one node. You can get to this title, you can rebuild it from scratch just using the included tools from a simple bare bones title. You can you can build it up over time. Um, one simple thing they added here was over on layout, they changed this to path uh, off from the default point. So you can see, might be a little hard to see, we have this one path here that is giving us, because this is path, if I make sure that fusion overlay is on as well, you see the sort of line draw through it. Um, by default, you can't interact with this right here. Um, you could always open it up in fusion and then uh, you can see that path. And uh, uh, in these options over your viewer, you can change this to this modify option. Then you can take that path, sort of stretch out these curves. It spreads your text along this path. 
that's what the path layout does. You can change this, do all sorts of stuff, especially giving it this nice little arc. Ah, oh, but something I just sort of recently found as well, I changed that to that modify, and now back on the edit page, I have those same controls that now we can use. We sort of change that toggle. But if I right click in the viewer, I see this template path option and you can see, oh, by default, it was on this done setting. You can't interact with it. If I change this to modify only, now you can interact with it here on the edit page. But watch out, I moved that around and by default, it even had some little text animation here. So watch out where you might be setting keyframes because you might need to get rid of them if you do something later. But that's the cool general arc. Another small thing is it has a slight sort of 3D effect caused by this Y angle rotation. You can see by default it'd be straight, but if you pull it up just a little bit, A, uh, this right angle is a little closer to the camera, you get that 3D effect. Now, of course, the big thing going on is all these stacked layers of text. We know we are only dealing with one node of text. Where is all where are all these copies coming from? And the answer to that is the big thing I wanted to get across in this video, uh, that being over here on this shading tab. You can see here we have shading elements. Shading elements, incredibly useful. Uh, I'm gonna touch on them in my next video as well. I'm um, using them for something I've never seen anyone else use them for. Um, for some slight like motion graphics, infographic type stuff, very cool. But you can see here, uh, we have eight different possible elements. And if I start going to these, and uh, oh, if I start going to these, yes, and disabling them, you can see over time, we are getting rid of a lot of this info. Um, that one was a little hard to see. Hey, let's show off something new in Resolve 18 as well. Uh, this little viewer window, uh, I have a new viewer background option. I'll change that to checkerboards so we can see exactly what is clear, what is going on here. This will be useful. Um, for some of the stuff we just saw. So we can see uh, here, shading element one is just this text and we have applied, instead of a solid fill, a gradient fill. And you can see that repeats over every word. And you can see this has this angle to match and we have this radius between these two colors. You can add a color in here at any time if you want to get wild. I don't want to get wild. This looks good as is. And the important thing to know about these shading elements is that all of these controls for the shading element are exactly the same. They can just sort of compound on each other. Um, this catches some people up because if you have a default text plus tool and you go into the shading tab, there are some defaults already, already set, um, but if you sort of like zero those defaults out, every new option, if I pull on like element seven, you won't see anything because it is just created, if I toggle off element one, a new full copy of that. Here you're only seeing seven, I'll turn back on one, turn off seven. It's just an exact copy. But if I come into element two, turn that on, that has been automatically customized to be this red outline. This isn't the outline element. You can create an outline from any of the elements. So for this comic, you can see here, shading element two. Uh, these are also conveniently named in this uh, preset. We have shadow line, turn that on, and we just get a really subtle line here, but that is especially useful when we turn on this depth option here. So now just that little black shadow on element two is what gives us that separation. We have an extra outline on top of that one. Five uh, gets us that black background and then we just had five, right? Oh no, six, another little nifty inside drop shadow. So lots of big bold layers, but lots of little drop shadow in between them. Yeah, and nothing on seven, nothing on these last two. So all of these are just building on each other. Let's walk through a, a few of the more important tools we have access to here. Let's actually do that uh, by starting off fresh uh, na, 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 with the element seven. By default, boom, plain white text. The big first option you have here, you do have opacity, but you also have this appearance. You can have it being solid, just an outline, this option called a border fill or this border outline. Uh, I'm also, I think, going to change this back to point and clear out this rotation just to be safe. So we have this straightforward view, right? So back on shading element, um, if I have this uh, border fill, it just like creates this solid background. You can see a little bit of a line in between where these characters were um, because this level was set to character. If I bring in horizontal, you see it only creates a background and it even creates that background based on the width of the character. 
but you can change the level of this from character up to word. There's only one, one word here and only one line up to the entire uh, text field if it covers multiple lines of multiple words. Then we have something similar, just this border outline option. Um, it has that same control for uh, text or characters, but it gives you that same look as an outline instead. You can even automatically change this to a dashed line or a dotted line, a dash dot line or a dash dot dot line or solid. Change up the, th the thickness. You can extend this sort of arbitrarily, change how round it is if you want a rounded look here. And of course, color, including something like that gradient color we looked at earlier. So now if I toggle this back on with element eight, we have our text and we have uh, this outline here, which looks kind of funky, but I'll now we have this text in a box and we have some softness options. If we want this to be blurred or add a little bit of extra glow on top of that, and then uh, simple offset controls, which is super useful. If you wanted to make this being like a default underline, you can totally do this. If I do something like change this back to a border fill, I don't want this to be round. I don't want it to be soft, but I want to come in all the way down to size and pull down this Y. So it is just a line. I have this rotation. I could do this as like a simple cross out effect or bring it down position here and have it being this sort of underline effect. That's pretty neat. And the wild thing about all this is that everything stays dynamic. You might have think, hey, I just created a line. You could create that with some simple masking or whatever. But if I come back and change this text to whatever I want, scale it down, that line stays perfectly dynamic. You'll see here if I scale it down, uh, that does affect the Y offset position that I did. Sort of that stays uh, solid, so you could come and adjust that here. Um, but, you know, pretty absurd levels of customization here. Customizability? Huh. So for something simple to underline or uh, drop shadow, um, I think a lot of unexplored options, especially with these border fill and border outline tools. Again, I'll show you off some of that in the next video, so stick around. Um, but you know, these are all just different tools you layer on top of each other and you can get some really interesting looks. Um, if you want to uh, poke around in an effect, this comic title is really great as well. A little while ago, I did create these classic sort of uh, 90s or word art inspired titles. Um, lots of these here, um, are built on the shading element tabs. Uh, there are uh, there are occasional um, other extra fun stuff I threw in there, but like something like this one, boom, it's just you know different layers of copies on top of each other, even that little outline, even that little pop. Uh, tons of stylistic potential, so check it out. I'll go ahead and drop the link to this word art pack if you want to check that out as well. Or if you're in Resolve 19, that new comic title, you can hop in, poke around. I do think this is also a great entry zone into poking around in Fusion more in general. Um, I've shown off before how to take effects and you know, open them up in Resolve. Um, and you can do that with lots of titles. So if you want to do more with text in Resolve, um, spending a little more time getting into the text plus tool, poking around all those menu options, we didn't show off a lot of stuff in there, especially with layout, but showing off that big key feature of the shading element tab is pretty uh, cool in there. We didn't even get into text modifiers, which is how you do some really cool stuff like that character level styling that we saw on the text tool. If you want to do that in text plus, you got to get into modifiers, which you might also talk about more. Um, if there's anything you would like to know about text and resolve, leave a comment. I love talking about text and titles. It's a lot of the stuff, uh, the work I do, but thanks for watching. Go do some fun stuff with text and resolve. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.